Winning Time, Episode 7, The Invisible Man. Mm-hmm. The opening scene, Dr. Bus explains how his mother taught him a few card games, and then they moved on to Monopoly. Because Monopoly has an element of chance and therefore luck, it's a perfect metaphor for what he has going on. And he believes that he's due some good luck with all the bad shit going on lately. Luck is nothing but math, really, you know, when you apply it to real life. It's just, you know, you keep banging your head against the same wall over and over again. Eventually, something's going to break. Steph Curry hitting 400 threes in a season. Fam, that's, there's a lot of luck involved in that. That's true. Like, yeah, there, there was skill. He's the greatest shooter of all time. But 400 is is like there are nights where you're not even trying to hit that you're hitting. Yeah. Like yeah. It, it it's just happening. Mhm. You know that that's just that's that you get in a rhythm, man. Getting on a you hot, hit a hot streak. streak. Yeah. Yep. yep. On a hot streak. So we're now 6 weeks after the McKinney accident. Pat Riley has to remind Westhead from the announcer's table that he has no timeouts. Jesus. What are you doing, Cooper? What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Nigga, I'm fucking found out. Man. <laughs> so loud. You gonna tell them people that you don't know I found out? Yikes. What's wrong with you? But Spencer Haywood gets ready to get into the game, and Westhead puts someone else in the game. Any thoughts on his still pettiness about the comment that was made in earlier? It's episodes? belligerent now, man. And and like, ah, man, it just it, it makes me it makes my head hurt because it's like he knows he's wrong. He knew he was wrong then. He knows he's wrong now. But rather than fix it, you would rather be feckless and sit there and just stew in it and let it get worse. Not because you have any type of, you know, animosity towards Haywood per se, but because you won't nut up and say something. You want to avoid the conversation. You are so scared. Like, like you shaking out your suit. Yep. And it's making everything worse. But I keep having to remind myself that this is also a drama dramatization of what happened. So maybe this is what visually or or at least aesthetically, you know, the players were feeling or the organization was feeling at that time. It may not have literally happened this way, but that's what it felt like. You know, they're trying to put us into the mindset of the time, I guess. From what I've seen, it's a dramatization, but it was well researched. Mm-hmm. The problem with that is you're probably getting these from sources, like you said, that had the perception of this is what it was. When in all actuality, that might not have been. Here's the, the thing: if we sat down and we got all these people in a room to do a doc like this, they would never tell us the truth, anyways. They Just would like, all tell stories from their perspectives, <laughs> and it would it would literally be even more skewed than what we're looking at now. At least, you know, with this one. We're getting third parties, mostly yeah. accounts, right? So at very least, it's unbiased. You, well, as much as you can, you can hope for. You know what I'm saying? At least it's a third person saying what they saw. You know, ball boys, random employees from that time, stuff like that. Front office guys, trainers, things like that. Like you may say, oh, well, they didn't know what was really going on, but they worked there every day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I know you know some stuff about your boss that they don't think you're supposed to know, but you know. Right? That's how it works. It's a job. It's a workplace, just like anywhere else. So if we can go to your job and ask the janitors and ask, you know, the entry level employees and ask the, you know, the groundsmen and ask the security guards and, and talk to them about stuff that was going on in that building, I'm, I'm, I, I, I would think that we would get some pretty relevant information. That's kind of how investigative reporting works. You know, you don't always get firsthand accounts from the source because they have every reason to lie to you. Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny that you mentioned that because Magic Johnson has a documentary coming out. called They call me magic. But he knew, though, he knew that they were going to create that doc back when he was working there. Mm -hmm. And I I honestly watching all of this shit kind of unfold and seeing the the more the beginnings of the the shrewd businessman Irvin Johnson it's like I can see where his stint as president of basketball associations could have been part of doing what Magic Johnson does like hey they're getting ready to have this doc coming out that's legacy building time mm-hmm. like this is when this is how now we're moving into the to the era of my career where I'm remembered more for the legend and the stories than I am for what actually happened on the court. Mm. So let me get close to the organization while this is going on so I can have somewhat of a favorable light. Now, obviously, that didn't turn out 
the best way. Yeah. I have no idea whether or not that had any effect on how he's being portrayed now in winning time. I wouldn't say that it's such a bad portrayal or such a one-sided portrayal that I don't, that I would judge Magic Johnson because of it. Like, it's very layered. It's very nuanced. Like, yeah, there's, there's some there's some shitty shit in there, and there's some really good shit in there. And it's the same thing for Kareem. I yeah. Like. Yeah, same thing. I don't like, think I, they would shit on either one of them. I don't understand why. Oh, it's not at it. <laughs> Fall back, fam. Because I guarantee you they reached out and they tried to get you involved with the project and you declined. It's, gosh, how that stuff works, man. Yeah. So they asked everyone else. What's more telling to me is that they didn't want to be involved in the scoping of their the story about their life, and yet they have so much to say about it after. I could see, all right, maybe I don't like your creative vision. This is what I would change. This is what I would do. This is what I would do. That's something different. Get hitting hit stonewalling and then having everything to say. Well, I mean, you kind of had your you had your role to play in this. You didn't want to play it. Yeah, Jerry West. Boy. Oh. <laughs> Jerry, Jerry West is the one I'm most sure is accurate, for sure. Because he acts like that in real life. There there are firsthand accounts about Jerry West being the sourest puss in the room. Mm-hmm. So it, it's, it's, it's not surprising. Yeah, It's surprising that he stayed around there so fucking long. Speaking that of which, hilarious. Dr. Buss, Bill Sharman, <laughs> and Jerry West are in a meeting. Jerry West, who clearly doesn't remember that he quit at the beginning of the season, Fam. suggests that Elgin <laughs> Baylor be the new guy. Why are you handpicking the Lakers' new coaches? Why are you even there suggesting, bro? You know what my next replacement should be. <laughs> no. But I, I, you know what? At that time, Jerry West was kind of like the Kobe of the Lakers. Mm. You know? Kareem hadn't put no rings on in L.A. yet. Mm -hmm. Magic was a rookie. Pat Riley wasn't Pat Riley yet. Mm -hmm. Jerry West was Mr. Laker at that. He's the fucking logo. Yeah. So it kind of would have been like telling LeBron to kick rocks. Right. Yeah. If he wants to stay around and be a bump on the log, I guess you kind of got to let him. But it's just awkward. It's just very awkward. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, Yeah. It's sad. Oh, well. Jack McKinney can't even tie his shoes, and yet when Dr. Buss comes in to ask how he's doing, he thinks he can make it back to the court in a month or two. My Begs boy can't Buss. even tie his shoes. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> My boy can't tie his shoes. You think he's going to be back in a, minute, uh, in a month or two? I would, no. be, I would be stapled to that seat, boy. I would move hands hands just like this whole game. Mad as hell. Got a foul! <laughs> you got a foul! Two, three! Two, three! <laughs> Hands tight, because I know if I stand up, I might collapse, and right. it is over. Right. Fall down on national TV, Yikes. done. Yikes. Done. But in order to keep their job, he begs Bust to give Westhead a chance against Boston. <sighs> you betting it all on Sackless? Oh, my God. Perfect casting, by the way, dog. No, for Was sure. Was that Jason Siegel? Siegel, yeah. Oh, my God. Great casting. Great Especially casting. his scenes with uh, Adrian Brody as Pat Riley. Yes. You just, you can yes. Just, yeah. It's, it's, it's like I, I'm seeing a dude from forgetting Sarah Marshall <laughs> and five year engagement m- fucking meshed into one person. Yeah. And it's Paul Westhead. Yeah. And it's hilarious. <laughs> so after speaking to McKinney about needing to keep things going, uh, Westhead asked Pat Riley to be his assistant coach. We hear Duh. That? Yeah. Duh. Doesn't tell him that the, the fucking sharks are circling and that he may be fired in the next week. So yep. you're making a big decision. You know what I'm saying? If you really want to coach, you're going to have to let that, that shit go. You're going to you're gonna have to let that go. Unclench. Mm. But, uh, yeah, no, I mean, it gave him a shot. At least he could say that. Magic's trying to catch a flight, and reporters began asking him about Larry Bird, despite his next game being Detroit. He said, fuck Larry Bird. <laughs> You heard? Basically. He was mad as shit once they started mentioning that Larry Bird might be rookie of the year. Which is interesting because he does go on to become rookie of the year, but Magic wins so much more. Yeah, fuck rookie of the year, but we won't. Five, not three, Boston. Not three. We've got five of those things. (laughs) With Kareem and Magic. Fuck you, Red Auerbach. (laughs) 
Once again, Jerry West is still showing up in places where he doesn't need to be by sneaking onto the plane, which was absolutely nuts. This man does not have a ticket. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. It's fine. I'm, I'm Jerry West. I'm the logo. It's fine. It's fine. Oh, man. You don't have a ticket. How did you get through TSA? That's some shit that clearly happened before 9 11. Yeah. That shit ain't I, don't never think, I don't think that actually happened. He probably, probably like drove there or bought his own ticket and showed up. I can see Cause that. They, I don't, even back then, I don't think they would let him through security but without a ticket. But he's the logo. He is the fucking logo. The logo. <laughs> so they might have. They might have. I don't know. That is hilarious, though. <laughs> like, <laughs> he's so unaware or aware, but just doesn't care. Yeah. Either way, it's hilarious. It's fucking <laughs> hilarious. Yikes. Claire Rothman claims that Dr. Buss can claim depreciation of value for the entire Lakers roster, which is ingenious if she can make it happen. Bruh. Bruh. Can I do what? Let's just talk about this for a minute. Why is it only that corporations and uber wealthy people are able to take advantage of these 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 tax breaks, these, tax breaks, these, these fiscal loopholes that turn their losses into more riches? So the whole franchise is failing, but I can just say, hit the note button, nope, and turn it into depreciated value and get it all back. Mm -hmm. Because that doesn't count as income at that point. Fam, fam, y'all don't even know what's coming next. I'm talking about here, because I, hey, (laughs) shit. Yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah. But it's it's just like, even outside of, you know, a podcast or anything, like any type of company, why is it that regular people are not able to do that? Well, it's because, number one, we don't even know shit like that exists. And I'm not just talking black people. I'm just talking about people who make less than $100,000 a year. Yeah. We don't know it exists. We don't know to fight or advocate for it. We're so fucking tied up in these bullshit-ass social issues that doesn't change anyone's lives. Uh, and we, You know, we just allow the the... The, the wealthy and the powerful to take advantage of it and keep getting richer off of us. Yeah. It's sick, man. Yeah, shit we're not we're not educated about these sorts of things and then, you know, shit like this happens. It's like, so, ah, yeah. the boat's sinking, so let me just turn it They can just upside write down. the entire income off. Yep. To where they're write probably taking off. a loss. That's I wonder what the liability is with that, though. Like, is it like a bankruptcy? No. Nah. No, it's just the, the cost of doing business as long as i guess as long as it's not showing that you're actually taking a loss well i guess but no but then that doesn't i guess you you make you make your your stockholders whole but there's no growth so i guess that's where the where the i guess the the kickback will come is that well yeah you just basically gave us our damn money back where's the the money we were supposed to make yeah you didn't make us anything yeah yeah that's Nuts, though. No. The Lakers go to Indiana in what should have been a sure thing, ends up in a 127 to 104 victory for the Pacers. Just the the first in a in a line of losses to come. Unfortunately, Yuck. Westhead finally admits to Pat Riley that he benched Haywood unnecessarily, but now he's too stubborn to apologize to him. What What the fuck was you gonna do, Pat? You was gonna square up with Spencer Haywood or something? <laughs> like. He was so, hey, that's fucking bullshit, man. You got to say something. <laughs> what was you going to do, Pat Riley? Fucking slick your hair back and some shit. The hell was you going to do over there trying to put that battery in that man's back? <laughs> if he have went over there and said anything to Spencer Haywood, it'd have got ugly all in front of oh, the reporters. Quick, quick, real quick. But no, yeah, I mean, he, he's not wrong in the fact that, hey, look, if that's what happened, then you just need to go talk to him. Like, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. You're losing your team because of why? Yeah, why is this still a thing? Like, go be a man. Stand up. Stand up. <laughs> Stand up. Stand up. <laughs> Cookie's in her dorm room, mad conflicted about the situation she's got with Magic, but she starts capping to her roommate, Rhonda, about how confident she is in this whole thing, about how she's got him wrapped around her finger. I thought that was crazy. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Magic heads to a business meeting with Dr. Day, and as he heads off, some white girl states that he picks a girl from the stands every night and that Cookie should have worn a brighter color. That's when Rhonda says, you, you could have wore a disco ball, bitch, and I was crying. Hey, man, Cookie, why do you let people throw you off your tilt so easily? So easy, like, 
I, I don't know, man. I, I just I, maybe I've never been in the orbit of somebody that big, you know, somebody who's known all over the world. So maybe I just don't understand. But it's like, you know him. He's calling you damn near every night. Every night. He didn't sit the tickets to come pick you up. Like, and, and I guess, yeah, he could be doing that in every city. Right. But they don't know him. Yeah. They don't know him. You know him. Mm hmm. You know him by his first name, know his middle name, know his parents. Yep. Yep. And you know that if you cut him off, he's going to keep sniffing around until you open back up. Because that's exactly what happened. I was say, happened you told him to fuck times. off and go to L.A. He fucked off and went to L.A. and then sent somebody back to Michigan to come get you. Yep. Yep. What happened to all that confidence? I got that man wrapped around my finger. What the hell just happened? <laughs> what happened, sis? Next what happened, queen? Gone. Where did it go? Cause some old Berg, oh fucking <laughs> Indiana Pacer girl. Oh no, this is Detroit. Detroit, yo. So she from Dearborn or something like that. She ain't from Detroit. <laughs> Talking about he pick a girl. She don't know. You know. Come on now. Now. Well, she don't know. I'm, I'm doing all this story. caping for Magic, and he just does not help me out. Uh, you in know this what I mean? At all. She don't know the full story. Yeah. But it is what it is. Detroit is the pits of the league, according to Pat Riley. So last place, Detroit shouldn't be a problem. However, the Lakers lose one thirty-eight to one sixteen. That ass beat one thirty-eight in the eighties. <laughs> Yo, that's wild. When you can tackle people, that's wild. <laughs> Yep. That's wild. They let you play football in the eighties. So yeah. if they got one hundred thirty-eight, y'all was trash that night. Y'all was garbage. To last place, Detroit. Mm-hmm. Magic ended up signing the deal with Buick without consulting his dad, who's saying that Buick's quality has fallen off. Magic's dad ends up dropping a bar about there being too many people in Magic's ear and ain't none of them family. Buick's quality definitely falling off. Like, but again, this is one of the things that was already new about Magic Johnson is that early on in his career, he made a lot of bad business deals. He has said we we've heard him speak about that publicly. He made a lot of bad business deals early on in his career. Putting your face on a Buick is probably one of them. Yep. You know what yep. I'm saying? I mean, you got Cadillac, you got Ford, you got Chevrolet. Like, uh, a lot more notable brands. Shit. You would have been better off hanging with the Japanese and, and, and talking to Honda. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When they was popping off. Yeah, I don't know, man. You got w- between Converse and Buick. I, I mean, you know what I'm saying. I'm seeing why we had to open up a chain of restaurants and, and movie theaters <laughs> and had a TV talk show. And, yeah, he had to get it back. He you know, it all of this, back. all of these these roles and all these other you know things, and it's it's amounted to a lot. Like like enough money to buy a piece of the Dodgers, mm-hmm. had a piece of the Lakers and sold it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I. I it, it it definitely fleshed out into something, but it didn't start out that way at all. No, it started off very rocky. Storm and Norm Nixon discusses the toxicity of Boston fans and playing in the Garden. The Boston Garden, not the Madison Square Garden. I've always felt it. Never wanted to travel there. Love clam chowder. Love seafood, oysters, clams, that kind of stuff. We'll never go there. I've always just felt like something's telling me, don't go there. Yeah. Bill Russell. Bill fucking Russell. 11-time champion, whooped Wilt Chamberlain's ass year in, year out for a decade. Is the reason why Jerry West won't fucking lead the Lakers. The Boston Celtics as a franchise owe everything to Bill Russell. Yeah. Everything. Red Auerbach is a fucking cigar-smoking leprechaun himself without Bill Russell. So after that man brings you 11 championships, you break into his home and drop a deuce in his bed? Boston wow. is the most racist city in America. And I always thought it would be somewhere in the South. Like, I, like just in my mind, I'm thinking the most racist place in America got to be somewhere in the South, somewhere in back, back road, Mississippi, Louisiana, something like that, Alabama. 
Nah, up here. Up here. Over that way. Could it be because Boston, Boston. is probably a bigger city than, than a lot of those places? Thing, hey, fam, it? I don't know how to quantify it at all. But I know any, 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 cause, cause, cause here's the thing. The sports is the great connector for, for racist white, old racist white guys and young black guys. It's, it's the, the union, right? Mm-hmm. It's where you can meet and have common ground. Uh, it, it's where all of a sudden I can halfway see you as a person, not all the way, not a white person, of course not, but just a, you know, like a human being halfway because you're on my team and you're giving me joy and happiness and an escape from my, my, my terrible being in existence. So, um, I can connect with you that way to have someone to bring you so much joy and pride for your city and then shit on their bed. And I wish I could say that that was the worst thing that happened to a black man in Boston, but we all know that's not true. Yep. Yep. I asked Mark Wahlberg, who people seem to conveniently forget got locked up for for Some for hate crimes. Mm-hmm. It's because he made Transformers, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck Boston. Always. But that is just insane, yo. Yeah. Fuck the leprechaun story, you know. Shitting on Bill Russell's bed? You'd have better off walk down to Foxborough, found TB12's locker, and dropped the deuce there. Yep. Then shit on Bill Russell's bed. They'd never do that though. They'll steal his jersey, but they, they would never. Jesus Christ! Shit on his bed. Kareem is having an issue with Magic being happy all the fucking time. He explains that too much has happened to black men for him to always be this damn happy. Being from Mississippi. Irvin Sr. knows all too well what Kareem means. And so Kareem has been tasked with roughing him up a little bit. I, I like this conversation because it, it it's clearly the rift between Kareem and Magic. If there one if one still exists at this point, but whatever the friction is, it's because Kareem came up in a time where opening your mouth to speak about black issues was anti well as it is now anti-american or treasonous but much so much more so you know civil rights era just just after the decade after the civil rights era so he had to deal with a lot of that he had to kind of persevere through more more stressful racial conditions Mm -hmm. and so he's looking at magic out here all you out here you know entertaining these niggas i was never entertaining like i was playing in spite of their hate Mm -hmm. you seem to be all too happy to grin and smile for him but it's like magic didn't live through that he didn't live that experience he probably lived somewhere where of course there's nowhere in america where racism doesn't exist but he had to get it the way kareem abdul jabbar got it Mm mm-hmm and that's what his father is kind of telling him, like he just never had to experience what I went through. Well, considering he was a basketball star yeah. for so long, yeah, even up to this point. Helps you cut some lines. Not all of them, but some. Yeah, yeah. After Elgin Baylor calls to the wrong room and lets Pat know that he's on his way to see Dr. Buss. Orlando Jones, fam. Yeah, <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> Oh my God! I like how they they letting everybody eat though. It, oh, it, this sure. is a star studded cast for sure. But I mean, who's gonna turn down the Showtime Lakers? No show? one, no one. So after he calls to the wrong room and lets Pat Riley know that he's on his way to see Doctor Bus, Pat Riley gets upset because West had lied to him. Now that he knows his back is against the wall, he immediately begins to demand more from West Head. Cause why would you bring me into this and not even at least tell me? Like I feel like Pat would have did it anyway. Because mm-hmm. he, he was getting tired of clenched fist. Yeah. But don't lie to me. You know what I'm saying? Don't don't make me take a leap I didn't know I was taking. Especially when we already so cool. And only because you need me. Yeah. There ain't no other reason for you lying to me other than you thought that I wasn't going to say yes, which is some bullshit. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. No, I don't. The whole shower thing was a little weird, but. That's what he had to do, I guess. I mean, fists work okay. True. They work just fine. I mean, it's a dramatization. Who, who's to say that? It didn't Pat happen Riley like didn't that. didn't go, <laughs> go of course. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Cookie didn't show up to the Christmas party. Magic threw. And as he's about to leave for Boston, she all of a sudden shows up. Magic finally gets the embrace from Cookie he's been waiting on. But lo and behold, Rhonda made sure she got something out of the situation, too. It's just so funny because Rhonda told her what it was. She <laughs> literally told her what's up. She like, if you don't take them fucking tickets, I'm going to take them. And I guess Cookie thought she was fucking playing. And when she left, after old girl got so, oh, my God. She left. After old girl put that put that bug in her ear about magic having women in every city that he chooses. Old girl went to the crib. Rhonda went to the house yep. to go kick it. Mm-hmm. Oh, Cookie didn't show up. I don't know what the hell wrong with her. All right, man. I'll see you later, Rhonda. Okay. You going to take me home, Magic? Boom. Boom. Not I'm now now she she filed for doing it because that's her friend and mm-hmm. and you know you know but why you why you just got your your golden goose out here just fluttering in the wind <laughs> yeah uh, it, you, you so you're so enamored by everything that's going on around him and you know him better than anyone what the hell do you think the other people around him see yeah yep. It's like, I mean, I, not cool, definitely not cool, but work harder. Oh, yeah. Work harder. 1,000%. Jack McKinney whooped Dr. Buss's ass in Monopoly, so it would seem that despite Jerry West's incessant demands for Baylor, he may still want to keep Jack McKinney around. Because he beat you in Monopoly? Hey, this man is weird. He's a strange cookie. Yeah. Dr. Buss was a strange man. Because that, that's a very arbitrary reasoning <laughs> to just totally change course. Because Monopoly means a lot to you're him. hiring. Despite the fact that he knows there is a element of chance in the game. So maybe, he get, he'll, maybe he'll get lucky. I guess. They got Larry Bird looking like a straight up hill jack. I guess that's what he was. <laughs> he was from Indiana. But nah, he's looking like fucking Larry the Cable Guy. I'm going to tear you a new asshole, boy. <laughs> Carrying a Budweiser around like that shit. You know what I mean? I I hate dip. I do too. I hate Don't understand it. that shit. It is the grossest fucking thing I have ever seen in my life. Yep. Like, Let me just spit out black shit all day into this water bottle or to this can. Or... And then just keep the shit around with them. Like man, Bottle fam, like hell. why you got dirt in your mouth, fam? What's that? You know? Why are you doing that? You know? Why you got dirt in your mouth? Mm. That shit is so gross. During the press conference, Larry ain't got shit to say. Magic offers an actual quote, but they'd rather fuck with everything Larry says. And they even follow him out of the room. <laughs> man, don't want to say nothing to y'all. Magic want to give y'all the whole story, everything. He want to give you everything you're looking for. Nope. Play the <laughs> game. Yup. We're going to win. Nope. <laughs> like, damn. Nothing. Mm-mm. Magic actually sells the fight, but y'all don't give a shit. I don't care. Kareem and Magic get into a conversation about what went down in the press conference. Kareem tells Magic that if he beats Boston, they will probably still give Bird props, and you'll only hear whispers about you, if anything. Fact. Then he drops a heavy bar, and he says, that silence is not invisibility, it's power. I thought that was a bar. Yep. Shout out to Kareem getting his mentor on. Yep. Yep. Red Auerbach not only gives Dr. Buss and Bill Sharman shitty nosebleed seats, <laughs> he then gives him a vegetable like his coach. Yo, a a That is absolutely wild. Hey, that is some real shit. Yep. I wish we could do shit like that today. I wish. Yeah. I wish shit like that could exist today. It just can't. No. Because no, it would be a whole fucking storm. It's too offensive. It would be. Oh, my God. Because that definitely happened. Take the franchise away from Red Hour back. Immediately. <laughs> Immediately. That 1,000% happened. I believe it. Because it was raw back then. Yeah. Yeah. It was dope. The Lakers take the lead in the first couple of quarters, but Larry Bird comes alive in the third, along with the rest being on the payroll. Eventually. Jesus. Yeah, it was wild. I also thought it was funny, the 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 opposing color commentators, Chick Hearn versus the Boston mm-hmm. guy. Like, 
if you was ever watching basketball on radio, that must have been a crazy time. Right. Because, like, imagine listening to the dude, and, and he he's just painting this story, and then all of a sudden, you actually go see the Celtics in a real game, be like, who the fuck is this? <laughs> Thought you told me they were great. Every time they lose, the refs are cheating. These guys suck. <laughs> oh, man. Eventually, Westhead brings in Haywood to rough up the Celtics. Bird gets frustrated and throws the ball at Haywood, which starts a scuffle, and the refs end up giving Haywood a tech and not Bird. Angry at the decision, Riley accrues a tech, and then that riles Westhead up. Riley accrues another tech so that Westhead can take command, and after doing so, the Lakers end up edging out the Celtics with a last-second shot by Coop. Dope. Dope sequence. Uh, and it gets them the win in Boston that they need to keep your boy on. Mm-hmm. To keep uh keep um Jack McKinney keep Jack McKinney in the seat for just a bit longer. Yeah. So shout out to Westhead, man. He got one. Uh, got one. Uh, an important one. Yeah. The last scene we see is Jerry Buss talking to Jack McKinney. Jerry is still unsure of what to do because McKinney may not ever actually come back, and Westhead won't win a champion or won't win them a championship, mm-hmm. which is funny because we know something that they don't. Which is that What's, Paul McKinney doesn't end up winning them a championship anyways. Westhead does win them a championship that year. Westhead is the coach that year. And he does. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Damn. So, wait. No, McKinney never makes it back that season? No. Fuck. Nope. Damn, Jack. I don't think he ever coaches them again. Damn, Jack. He ends up uh, coaching the Pacers. Damn, Jack. Mm-hmm. Mm, that's tragic. Yep. That's fucking tragic. So all of that just for West had to eventually Fuck that bike, man. Should have just bought a caddy. I mean, fuck the bike. I mean, he, 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 the man won them a championship. So wait, I'm so confused because the preview for the next episode is Jack McKinney telling Paul Westhead to tell Pat Riley that he's no longer going to be on the team. Uh, and he's standing up. In the office. Oh, maybe he has a spill. Let's see what happens. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Maybe we'll that see. maybe that scenario with standing up actually happened in, like, practice or something like that. Could have been. Because my been. boy's still having trouble tying his shoes. Right. Uh, any other thoughts on episode seven? Solid episode. Um, love that we've seen more actual, like, basketball playing. Like, this is Showtime Lakers, so I'd like to see more, more of that. Let's see some more basketball. Uh, it seems like we only usually get one game yeah. in an episode. Well, no, this one we got three. We got three, but it was like Detroit. Yeah, it, it wasn't was, it was the like actual game. Yeah, yeah. Then, You're right. Yeah, so. at, at very least, practice something. I want to see more basketball. Like, What is the point of getting six, nine, and seven-foot actors if you're not actually going to play the games? Yep. You know? Yep, yep. So, yeah, yeah, no, I'm going to stay on and – uh. We'll be back next week. Give us your thoughts on episode seven of Winning Time. The Invisible Man. The Invisible Man. Uh, Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And come back next week for another review. And make sure you check out the playlist for our Winning Time reviews. We've reviewed one through seven. Uh, And make sure, like you said, make sure you subscribe because we're going to be talking about this every week throughout the season.